the Isco Ultrastar Red. It's a 60mm attachment famous for being sharp and infamous for being resistant to flaring. Built by Isco in Germany, it is small and light and has a large entrance pupil and a quite large rear element, allowing high shooting speeds. It weighs 500 grams just by itself and is 90mm long. With 24mm sensor height and 6x5 aspect, we managed to pair it with lenses as wide as 75mm. The Isco Red comes in different versions named 2.1 or 2.4 that only differ in the focal length of the spherical lens that comes with the Ultrastar. That is, if the Ultrastar is sold with a spherical lens. The anamorphic part is the same in all versions. Isco also has 35mm projector lenses that suffer from the problems we just talked about, so we recommend to stay in the 60mm realm. Lately, there are a lot of offers on eBay that only contain the spherical lens, counting on ignorant buyers. The spherical part will not replace the taking lens as it neither offers focus nor iris. You want the anamorphic part of the lens and you only want that part. The ISCO has metric threads on the inside of the rear and there are some elegant solutions for lightweight and compact mounting that are so much nicer than bulky clamps. Just don't try to use that with a Vari diopter without proper support. A little goodie, the focus ring of the ISCO can be locked. We are going to use a 90mm Leica Sumicron R as our taking lens. The ISCO's modern coating works well in the torture set. It's amazingly sharp and clear for a projector lens. Colors and contrast look great. At 200% we can see my disability to pull focus, but I nail the forward position and here the ISCO shows its glory. We are in Atlas Orion territory here. Subsequently, a 16x9 crop looks perfectly fine. But our setup also shows the problem with the ISCO. Even in extreme situations, horizontal flares are next to absent due to advanced multi-coding. Good for projectors, not so fashionable for filmmakers. Racking focus reveals moderate breathing and good performance from close to far. Ramping the aperture shows that the ISCO is already reasonably sharp at around f2.8. For the low light setup, we are going to switch the lens to a 85mm contact size at f4. You can see little more vignetting due to the slightly wider lens. Overall, the setup performs very well, but the absence of horizontal flares makes the image less charismatic compared to other solutions. Thanks to the Veridiopter setup, the ISCO shows next to no distortions. Even at the minimum working distance of 70 cm, the image looks flat and there's no meaningful overcompression you will have to have an eye on. At time of release, the Iskro Altostar Red was traded for around $500 if in good shape. We will put links in the description.